Windsor Lancers take on the visiting Wolf Griffins in the first home game of 2014. At this time, we would ask that you please rise, gentlemen, respectfully remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. Record good for seventh in the OUA West. But why hear my voice talk about it when you can hear my colleague, color man for this evening, Mike Speck? Speck, what are we in store for? Oh, we're in store for some great basketball. They just tipped off Hugel, so I will let you do your thing on play by play and be back with you in just a moment. That sounds good to me, Speck. Milan to Clemenson. He's down low to at number 14, Chester Krieger to 12. Jocelyn, Jocelyn the Rock misses. Rebounded by 12, number 5 taking it up, that is Marlene Freeman. Yeah, that missed three ball right there is going to make Coach Valley want to pull her hair out, Mike. <laughs> I bet spec. Basket is good, number 23 for 12, that is Caitlin Catherine McTavish. Ball down to the Rock, the Rock finds Clemenson. Clemenson. Ball swung to number 4. Caitlin Long with the triple. Great ball movement by the Lancers on that last possession. 
I hear that one, Speck. Marley Freeman, I believe that is for the ball now. Finds a cutter. Ball stripped by Keelan Long here. And a foul committed on the play. That is number four for the Guam Griffins. Barbara Inrig. Well, foul on number four, Barbara Inrig Peters. Her first personal first team foul. Ball will be inbounded by Caitlin Longmere to number five, Christine Lalonde. Lalonde to LaRock. LaRock looking for someone, finds Tessa Krieger. Krieger finds Longmere. And a three in the key call on Jessica Fleming's song. It's interesting, you look out there on the court, no Maya Marie Langlois and no Carissa Williams at this point, starting a few of the bench players over top of their starters against these Guelph Griffins. Definitely going to hurt them in the long run. And a travel committed by number eight on the Guelph Griffins. That is Catherine Short. Yeah, a little bit of a sloppy field to the beginning of this basketball game. Mike, we'll see if both teams can settle in. Long near. Five, that is Christine Lalonde to Jocelyn the Rock. The Rock looking for someone. Clemenceau fighting down low. She gets it. Back to Lalonde, the lock for three. And Ooh. misses. It's a bit more emphasis on the three ball than we're used to seeing from this team, Mike. They're shooting just over 30% from behind the arc this season. So maybe something that they're trying to work on against a 3-9 and nine squad like Guelph. And coming with the CIS championships, you're going to have to work on some things. Uh, I, as apparently, Coach Valet has highlighted the three ball as something that they should work on. Uh, evident in the past games. Ball now fumbled around, picked up by number five, and a back and over call. That was a uh, pressure defense, good pressure defense by the Lancers, and Caitlin Longmuir was able to force the turnover. Yeah, fantastic defense, and that's something that this team is known for. They're only allowing 46 points a game. That's tops in the OUA, so terrific to see by Longmuir on that last run. Three with you. Clemens on down low, turns and faces. Looking for something, takes it herself, backs down. She was fouled by number 23. That is Catherine... Catherine it's amazing how effortless Jessica Clemenceau looks down low when she's actually such a, a physical player, but she just makes it look easy to draw a foul like that. Clemenceau is definitely the marquee player on this Windsor Lancers roster. I mean, she's averaging 18 points a game, eight rebounds. I mean, this is she is definitely the player that will be expected for the next for her replacement as she takes the shot. And hits. See, and Catherine McTavish on the other side of the ball is what I would call a, a poor man's Jessica Clemenceau. She really leads this Guelph Griffins team with 17.4 points per game. She shoots 44% from the floor and is actually averaging a double-double a game with 10.4 rebounds to show for it as well. So she's a younger player, and I would say she's kind of of the same mold as Jessica Clemenceau on the other side. So it'll be an interesting matchup to watch those two go at it all night. The drive kicks at 23. Catherine McTavish misses. Picked up, can't connect, rebound from Monson. And Clemenceau is doubled, looking for someone, finds Lalonde. That great job on the glass by Clemenceau there. Lalonde, that's Andrea Kiss back to Clemenceau. Clemenceau to Lalonde. Lalonde spots up, and off back iron rebound to Monson. Working her way down, and another foul on Catherine McTavish. You can see right now that Clemenceau is really going after this McTavish, kind of trying to assert herself, you know. She's saying, if you're going to put me through the line, I'm a great free throw shooter. I'll take my points there. Oh, exactly. Trying to be a little bit more physical, and that's exactly what we need at this point with some of our starters on the bench. We need Clemenceau to be the star that she is. On the line, and she missed the first. Well, we, we've seen that Coach Valley is deciding not to start Maya Marie Langley or Carissa Williams. Is this right of her to do that, or what do you think, Spen? Um, I like it. I mean, clearly we're, we're still up in this game. It is early, but it's 6-2, to two, and it, it gives us a chance to kind of throw some of the other girls out there who would still be starters on any other team in the OUA. Like, it, it's not like there are any clown minutes out there. These are still very talented basketball players who are filling in for Langloy and, and Williams. Well, Marley Freeman brings it up. Finds number eight. That's Catherine Short. Short to Caitlin Yalen. Yalen to Freeman. Freeman looking for someone. Finds Short. 
short, drives it on Klamasa, can't find it. And to Longmuir now, Longmuir. Looking for number five, Christine Lalonde to Cheyenne Roger. Roger to Kiss, Kiss down low to Klamasa. They're playing it straight up. Klamasa backing down, and the double comes in, and a foul on number four, that is Barbara Ng Hughes. That's three personal fouls against the Griffins only four minutes into this first quarter. Not good for them. And all created by Jessica from Osa. She knows that they're going to be doubling her. Sometimes even three players on her for the game. Pardon me, that's four team fouls for the Guelph Griffins. It's tough, though, against a physical team like the Windsor Lancers. They're going to run into these kinds of troubles. Cheyenne Roger working down low. Can't connect on the five-footer. Out comes Guelph. Number 14, that is Erica McFadden who checked into the game. Catherine Short finds McFadden. McFadden to Short, Short. That's Samantha Renshaw to McFadden. McFadden spots up for the three. And off back iron, rebounded. Great effort by Jocelyn The Rock on that loose ball. Can't quite save excellent, it. Excellent, excellent effort. Guelph will retain possession. I just kind of want to reiterate the, the poor three point per, uh, shooting performance that we're seeing from both of these teams so far. Only one three point shot has been hit in almost eight attempts on both sides of the ball. Here's McFadden. Finds. And a foul call now on number seven, Andrea Kiss. Called created by number eight, Captain Show. Number seven, Andrea Kiss. Her first personal first team foul. Short looking for somebody now. Finds number nine, Dana Van Balkum. Balkum. Back to Captain Short. Spots up for the three, and no good. Rebounded though by the Griffins. Kaylin Yalen now, to number nine, that is Danifel Balkum, and she is fouled on the play. She will shoot two, foul on, looks like number 12, Jocelyn The Rock. Without Williams and Langlois in the lineup, you can see a little bit of a drop off on the defensive side of the ball. Not not as much, obviously, with only two points on the board, but just allowing fouls and things like that, and um, allowing Guelph to clean up on the glass, which normally you wouldn't see with a, a defensive player of the year like Langlois on the court. Yeah, Balcom hits her first. And you know what? You see right now that defensively, the offensive pressure is not overpowering for the Lancers. The Lancers are pressing, so it is making it difficult for the Guelph Griffins to get anything going. As Clemasa loses the ball, it was knocked away on the play. Entering the game for the Lancers. Checking in now nine, for the Lancers. Kim Maroon, and number, number four, nine, Kim Maroon, and for number well, four. Number 15, Vanessa Rampato. Kayla Longer. Yeah, looks like they're taking Clemasa out of the game. Lalonde to LaRock, back to Lalonde, to Longyear. Longyear looking down low and finds Cheyenne Roger. Roger posts up and hits the nice flip shot off the glass. Roger! And see, I like Cheyenne Roger in a situation like this. As the ball is dribbled off, off Erica McFadden's foot, and it will be Lancer basketball. Cheyenne Roger provides a nice change of pace for the for Jessica Clemenson. Clemenso is what I would like to call a finesse uh, big man down low. Uh, Clemenso provides that physical, or uh, Roger, sorry, provides that physical uhness that you need to, you know, change it up down low. And it shows how much they trust her too, putting her in for 15 minutes a game. That's second second most outside of the the Lancers starters, and she's averaging 5.2 points per game. Clearly, there's a lot of talent there. Call was changed on the play. Seems like the ball was tipped by Cheyenne Roger. Griffins with the ball now. Number nine, Dana Van Bolkham blocked by Roger. And it is going Lancer's way here at the St. Dennis Center. Longmere 
Finds Christine Lalonde. Lalonde. Lalonde here. And a foul on the play. On the floor. Foul will be on number, 12, number 24, number 12, sorry, Samantha Renshaw. Yeah, that's a great call going the Lancers' way because it was almost an offensive turnover for the Lancers, which would not have been good. Bailed out by the referees. Yeah, yeah. That's what you love to see. Hasselhorn hits the first. Lalonde hits the second. Doubling up court, guarded by Christine Lalonde. And great deny in the post by Cheyenne Roger. Ball comes out to number eight, slice and dices. That is Catherine Short. Now we'll rock with it, looking for something. She drives to the cup and is fouled by number eight, Catherine Short. Another trip to the line for the Lancers. These Gulf Griffins are kind of making it easy on us, you know, gaining all of our points from the charity stripe. And you know what? It's a great strategy right now. Obviously, Guelph is a team that is low in the OUA standings, gives up a lot of points. And this is a way, I guess, you know, we're just trying to exploit that and get as many easy points as they can as the Rock hits the first. Yeah, and clearly abandoning the three ball as well that wasn't working for them early on. You see they're taking it down low into the paint and now just trying to force the Griffins to foul them, which they've shown they're willing to do. Yala. with it now. Two Catherine Short. Short looking around. Finds number 15, Vanessa Rapato. McFadden. Drives to the lane, throws up a prayer, and no good, but gets her own rebound. This is number 11, spots up, and connects. That is Caitlin Yallen with the three. It's one thing that the Lancers need to make McFadden do is shoot the ball. She's an excellent passer, but not a very high percentage shooter, shooting under 30% from the field and from three-point range. Long mirror, off back rim. Ball picked up, though. That's number nine for the Lancers. Who averages not many points a game. She's averaging about a point a game. Well, she got her fill today. Yeah, only averaging about eight minutes per game. Spots up and hits. Erica McFadden. And that's one thing you say. Erica McFadden, a terrific, terrific basketball player. Only 29% from the field, 24% from the three-point range. I mean, Speck, do we let her shoot the ball? Uh, I think that's what you want to do. You put your best defender on the court on her and, you know, make her earn some, some hard baskets, which clearly she's shown that she can't do. That was Christine Lalonde. Misses it, tries to get a rebound, tips it out of bounds. Another ways to possession. And that's the one thing we noticed in their last game. They went 6 with 22 from three point range. I mean, come, come bigger games. Do you think we should be wasting possessions like that? Well, clearly you cannot ever waste a possession. That's something that Coach Valet is going to stress on her team over the, the coming weeks. And you see some of these three balls that they're shooting are absolute air balls and going out of bounds. So you, you don't want that. And I think that's why they're, they're planning on trying to create some plays where they can get open looks from three-point range. The drive to the cup, no good. Kicks it back out. Kaylin Yalen nails it. Spots up. Yeah. Yellen is on fire at the moment. Six points, two for two from beyond the arc. We got a kickball against the Guelph Griffins. Yeah, this is not what you want to see if you're the Lancers. Even if your backups are in the game, you, you want to be up by more than a point on a three and nine squad. And we saw that in the game against Carlton. Funny how they always go back against that, but you know, anything can happen on any game. Free ball. The Kamal sound checked in. 
Hassan can't hit it. Double team again in the post. She's going to have to figure something out. Getting a little chippy down there as well, if you saw. She was in a battle with... Spots up. No good. It was, cut you off. No, that's fine. It's number 15, Vanessa Rampado was kind of giving Clemenceau a push down low, so we'll, we'll see what happens with that the rest of the game. Ball inbounded to McFadden. Hey, Yellen. Yellen. This is it. No good. That is number nine. Dana Van Balkum with the shot. Kind of looks like it's going to go the Griffins' way. Looks like she was fouled on the play. She gets the non-call. Ball inbounded. Number one, Yellen. Yellen, no good. Off back iron. Rebounded by Kamalso. Long here looking. Finds Kamalso. She can shoot. But off back iron. Rebounded. Ellie Prebo. Long here with the, with the three ball. Off him again. And that's one thing. I think the Lancers are using this game to kind of figure out how to knock down those shots from long range. I mean, obviously they haven't been shooting particularly well all season, so maybe trying to abandon the post game a little bit. Create some oh. opportunities and Ooh. a hard foul. It seemed to be a moving screen. No dice from the referee. I guess they, they just didn't see it. Looked pretty bad to me, but good honor for getting right up. Ball goes to Emily Primo and she hits. Emily Primo. McFadden now. Looking up, finds number nine, Dana Van Balkum. Back to McFadden. Van Balkum and McFadden playing a little two girl game. Back to McFadden, to Yalen. Yalen for something, finds McFadden. McFadden shoots and connects from three point range. I take back everything I said about Erica McFadden earlier. That was a terrific shot by the point guard. That's the one thing. Sometimes shooters can shoot out of their slumps. Let's see if the Lancers can do the same. The Rock finds Primo. Primo is fouled by number seven, Emily T Aaron Tilly. I love how as soon as Jessica Clemenceau gets back on the court, you see a, a sense of confidence and calm coming back into this Lancer team that allowed a big run by the Griffins, but they're cleaning up the glass quite a bit better. They're no longer having to fight for rebounds and then getting that ball down low and causing fouls. You know, and I, and I see right now that the Lancers with Clem Clemenceau in the game are trying are thinking they're able to take the three ball, knowing that Clemenceau is going to clean up the mess, so to say. Yeah. As Primo misses the first. And it seems it's, it's nice to have that confidence that Clemenceau can rebound just as well as she can score. But, you know, we've seen that Clemenceau, obviously, averaging 18 points a game, is a better score than she has a rebound. Oh, clearly, you hit the nail on the head there, Mike. McFadden drives through the lane on Primo, blocked by Primo. Throws it up, no good. Samantha Rampato blocked by Andrea Kiss, and that's how the first quarter will end. Your University in Winter Lancer 16 to the Guelph Griffins. 16. Well, Mike, after a quarter of basketball, what are you seeing? Game 16 all against the 3 and 9 Guelph Griffins. Hit some shots. That's all I have to say right now. It's, it's tough to score when you can't score. It's plain and simple. That's true. Who said that? Was that uh, Gandhi? Uh, maybe. I'm not too sure. But, uh, no, the, the Lancers have to keep the game going their way. Don't take anybody lightly. We saw it against Carlton. They took Carlton lightly, thinking that they were truly the better team. And, you know, maybe statistically they are. But, like I said, any team can win on any given day spec. No, and uh, I definitely feel the same way. I'm just wondering. I mean, you didn't. We didn't see Maya Marie Langloy or Carissa Williams at all in that first quarter. Are we going to see them at all in this game? You're going to have to because I don't think that Coach Valet wants to. You know, obviously, she, she doesn't want to lose. You know, winning isn't normal, and she's, she'd like to keep up that winning streak. However, I think that Coach Valet has the confidence in her bench and in those role players to to pull out this. Victory. I mean, well, is ranked seventh in the in the OU and look, the, it, this is a game where if you snooze on the boards, you're obviously going to snooze in the score column, and 
the bench I just can't rebound as well as the big three. Uh, I, I think that they should be in this game, although they aren't rebounding as well. Just give it time like Nova Kane. Always works. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I'm surprised at this Guelph team as well. They're really not shying away from taking it to the Lancers. They've really kept up with them, and this is a young team, except for their, their elder statesman, Marley Freeman, who's a fifth year. The rest of their starters are second and third year players, and they've looked fantastic. Erica McFadden hitting a, a ton of shots, and she looks extremely fast out there. I would actually love to see that matchup with Langlois guarding her if they get Maya back out onto the court in this game. That would be terrific to watch. I really think the key player going forward is going to be Cheyenne Roger. And the reason I say that is because, look, it seems right. And a little sense of urgency here by the Windsor Lancers. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they respond to being down in this game. Long here to Tessa Krieger. Krieger to Tomasa. And we have a walk by Tomasa. They're playing that one high, one low, two man post game. And it seems to be it seems to be working to an extent, but I'd like to see Krieger maybe take it to the basket and have Tomasa clear the lane for her to do so. Yeah, most definitely a different look from the Lancers, and it should be hard for Guelph to contain down low. Tilly to Rapato. Rapato misses the easy look. And she is throwing elbows at Jessica Clamoso. That's the second time in this game that we've seen that. I wonder if we'll, she'll end up getting a technical. I wonder if uh, they're we'll just trying to uh, round her, you know, get her, <laughs> get her uh, aggressive, get her, her going, first, or first perhaps you know, try and get her to get in foul trouble. Well, that's what you want to do when there's such a, a clear differential in talent, is you want to try and frustrate the more talented player and throw them off their game. And uh, I guess Guelph is trying to do that, not succeeding though. It's Christine Malone with the basketball to Clemenza working down low on Rapato and Hash. Jessica Clemenza. All notched up at 18 with 8 minutes and 40 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Aaron Tilly to Rapato. Rapato to McFadden. McFadden spots up and hits again. Yeah, watching Rapato on the court, she's trying to make contact with Clemenceau at any point, even when it's not necessary. Erica McFadden is on fire, and we have a hold on Jessica Clemenceau. Well, foul on oh, well, Vanessa Rapato, her second personal, second team foul, entering the game for the Lancers, number 10. Maya Langlois, number six, Carissa Williams, and number 13, Cheyenne Roger. Down three points, it's about time you uh, throw your stars back in the game for the Lancers. And uh, Johnson Lawton. McFadden with it now. Directing traffic out there, finds Aaron Tilly. Tilly spots up and hits. The 12 Griffins are on fire right now, Spec. Yeah, I cannot believe that the Lancers are allowing these many open looks from three point range. Chris Williams to Cheyenne Rogers to Jocelyn the Rock, who finds Camasso. Camasso to Marie Langlois, shoots, no good. Rebounded by Tilly to McFadden. Finds number nine, that is Dana Van Balkum. Back up top to McFadden. You let it in and in. You know, drive to the lane. And a charging foul is called on the play. Yeah, that's terrific defense down low by Jocelyn LaRock. Charge that charge to Caitlin Yalen. <laughs> oh, well played with uh, the rhyming. Was that was that I, I thought I heard a rhyme in there. Yeah, wordplay. Oh, it was some wordplay, but you said charge that charge to. Oh well, Caitlin Yalen. I guess I mean that's her parents' rhymes that we should be complimenting. Congratulations to the Yalen family. And Marie Langlois. This is downloaded from also from also working on Rapados and hits. As you can see right now, from also not really rattled by the defense of Samantha Rapados. Yeah, it's going to take a lot more than that to rattle Jessica Clemence on. You can put Ron Artest on her, and I don't think that it would rattle her. Carissa Williams checks in and fouls. McFadden looking for somebody. Can't find anybody. 
finds Carissa Williams, who steps out of bounds while trying to retrieve a loose ball. I mean, on that play, that's a ball that, you know, you, no one's going to touch it. You obviously just let it go. You get you gain possession. Instead, she tries to get a, does, do a little bit too much and ultimately loses uh, what could have been possession for the Winter Lantern. Well, I think that's just a case of a player who's been on the bench for the entire first quarter and she wants to touch the ball, you know. Got a, a little bit too greedy on the play, but great defense overall by Carissa Williams. That's Marley Freeman to, a to Aaron Tilly. And a ball thrown out of bounds by Caitlin Nealon. Tried to receive by number five, Marley Freeman. Can't do it. Lancers possession. Ball inbounded. Goes to Maya Marlandez. Jocelyn Rock finds Cheyenne Roger. Roger finds Tomas on down low. Who goes at the bottom. I think Tomas has finally woken up. Yeah, well, she's, she's been there all game, but really playing with a lot of the bench players, and she, she's still been a star. But right in Rampato's face, love to see that after the chippy game that she's been playing all, all night. And a foul on what seems to be... Lancer's foul on the bridge. Number 10, number 10 my Marie Langlois. Freeman goes to the line right now. She makes the first, and with that, the Griffins lead 25 to 24 with 6:14 left to play here in the second quarter. I think in all my time at the University of Windsor, this is the longest I've seen the Lancers not in the lead in a game. The women's team, not the, oh, no, the women's team, yeah. Come on, son. Come on, son. Shoot and hit. She is. I think she's ready to play ball now, Spec. Well, now that she's got her, her favorite playmates back on the court, it's just, you know, easier for all three of them to work together. They're so terrific as a unit. That's number eight, Catherine Short, trying to get fancy on Cheyenne Roger. Can't do it. Leaks out. And a layup by Maya Marie Langwood. Timeout taken by the Guelph Griffins right now. I think the Lancers have found their stride here in the first round. Well, I mean, you can tell right away the, the Guelph Griffins are forced to use a timeout because they have no response for this three-headed monster that is Jessica Clemenceau, Maya Marie Langlois, and Carissa Williams. Offensively, defensively, uh, th this is a beast of a unit, and they're, they're showing. Even after uh, a quarter on the bench for Langlois and Williams, they can come out and dominate. And smart of Coach Valley to use the opening stages of a game that you know to get the bench players involved get everyone on you know get everyone on the bench and the role players to have the same feeling as the big three it's going to help them in the long run i guarantee it for sure and it's not that the lancers take this game lightly in any way but this is a team in guelph that is not nearly as talented as the windsor lancers and just showing that you can throw your bench players in there and still be competitive for an entire half of basketball pretty much and then throw your stars out there to to get you the win it really is going to help them in the long run going towards the national championships i feel as long as they can get their three ball game going this team will be unstoppable i agree with you here the timeout is over we are ready to play basketball short to inbounds and captain short with the ball short met with a double team still create a bylo bylo rock taking in by my and the Wings and Lancers are starting to press. Look out. Yeah, that's one thing we didn't see while Langlois was on the bench was the turnover numbers. They're starting to come alive for the Lancers in the second quarter. Marley Freeman has a ball taken away. A great hustle play by number 11, Kaylin Halen, off her leg, and it will be Windsor and Lancers possession. Spots up and hits. Kamalsan is one of those players that she'll work you down low, but don't let her step out and take that short range. And a turnover created by Langlois, who goes in and blocks. 
Yeah, she had a few words for the official after that one, too. Should have been a foul down low on the Guelph Griffins. A questionable, ser questionable series of events, that's for sure. As the ball comes out to number four, that is Barbara Ingrid, who gets it to 12, Samantha Redshaw, and hits. Surprising shooting performance by this Guelph Griffins team. Yeah, they've really come to play tonight, and I mean, a lot of teams, when they come into this building against one of the top teams in the country, they want to play up to the competition, and the Griffins are doing that right now. Williams spots up and is fouled. She will go to line on the play. It really is great to see, though, how this team is still playing so loose in a tight game. You can see them out there. They're, they're communicating well. They're smiling. They're still having a, a good time playing as a team, and I think that that's going to really help them out in the long run, not tightening up, not forcing things. Foul was on number five, Marley Freeman, and Caitlin Longhair has now checked into the game for number 12, Jocelyn The Rock. Williams hits the first. Hey, a rubber ducky artificial noisemaker. Yeah, I mean, uh, whatever helps, I guess. This Windsor Lancers crowd is just uh, going bananas. Missed by Williams, picked up by Cheyenne Roger, and creates a jump ball. It will be Lancers basketball. Yeah, I'm no scientist, but they say before the games, no artificial noisemakers, and I don't know if a rubber ducky qualifies as an artificial noisemaker, Mike. Well, if it doesn't, it should now. Here's Club <laughs> working down low. Met by a double team, and the ball stolen by number nine, Dana Van Balkum. Ball comes out. Caitlin Yalen with the ball now. For someone finds that is Catherine McTavish with the easy bucket working down low on Cheyenne Roger. New Langlois now to Williams. Williams back to Langlois. Pomos on down low. And it's automatic down low. Yeah, come on, son, doing a great job there on the layup. Ball to the Erica McFadden. McFadden has the ball tipped away by who looked like number four, Caitlin Longmere. It will be Guelph Griffin's possession. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise, Mike. A 35 to 30 Lancers lead at this point in the game. Well, I'm pretty surprised by the Guelph shooting performance. Erica McFadden spots up and off. Front iron ball rebounded by Carissa Williams. Williams. Drops the lane. Back out to Camasso. To Longmere. Longmere. Finds Marine Langlois. He's looking for someone. Finds Camasso. Who else? And it's in. And you can really see this Griffins team trying to be physical with Clemence on. Does it look like it's getting to her at all, Mike? Not at all, as the Guelph Griffins throw the ball out of bounds. And here's the thing with the Lancers, you know, they press the entire time. It's pretty exciting to watch if you're into defensive basketball. It's the ability to create turnovers at will and turn those turnovers into points is really what helps the Lancers, you know, be the second best team in the CIS. I would argue that they are the best team in the CIS. I mean, who writes those rankings anyway? No good. Yeah, the, for the loss to Carlton really hurt them in the rankings. Obviously, with St. Mary's being undefeated, ball goes down into McTavish. McTavish, no good. Rebounded by Lang Langlois. Poked away by Yalen. To McTavish. McTavish. And hits over number nine. That is... Kimberoon. Yeah, rare turnover by Langlois. There too. She's not going to be happy about that one. Orson Williams. Looking for something. Finds it, Marie Langlois. Ooh, Kaylin Longmere, the short jumper, goes off back iron, rebounded by Kim Maroon, but dribbles out of bounds. Oh, sloppy basketball by the Lancers in this first half. Definitely not the type of basketball we're accustomed to seeing from Windsor. Uh, I'm not saying it's turning into the Carlton game, but it has the ability. They're only up by five, and with the way Guelph has been shooting in the first half, you never know. Yeah, it, it seems like, you know, they're, they're not taking this game lightly, but, you know, it could slip away from them if they continue to say, well, we'll get them on the next possession. And a swat by number 14, Erica McFadden. This is a, a very chippy game, if anything, to start off. Um, we obviously saw the Samantha Rapatos and 
Jessica Clemence on battle down low, which led to about three or four battles by Samantha Rapatos. Yeah, and leading to her not being in the game anymore, but it, it seems like it doesn't matter who they're putting in the game at this point. They want to be physical with the Lancers. That's just what you have to do against a more talented team. You want to frustrate them and you want to bump them at any point in the game. Long near misses the first and hits the second. And there go the rubber duckies. Yeah, the rubber duckies letting us know when they score. Thanks a lot, uh, you Windsor fans. Good foul, a technical foul. And a coach, Kristen Davidson. Oh, and I guess the golf coach had a few choice words for the officials, which is now sending Jessica Clamosa onto the line. I don't know how you can argue after a, a, a clear hack. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty overt, but you know, I mean, I guess that's the attitude of this this whole team. They want to come in here and show that they won't be pushed around. They're doing the pushing around, even with the officials. Come on, song. hits the first. I mean, but when you're in a game, you're only down seven points to a team like the Winter Lancers. You can't be taking uh, silly fouls and you know, you know really pushing your luck with the technicals. No, you cannot. To hand a team like Windsor, you know, two points right there in a tight game. You're right, Mike. And with the ball back now, the possibility for another, you know, five, another three points, it's, it really is something that you have to be smarter about. Long here to Williams. Williams to Clemenceau. Makes one move back and down. Finds my Marie Langlois. Goes in. Rebound. Get the room. Back to Williams at the top, a fresh shot clock. So Caitlin Longmere makes one great move. Tries dribbling past the defense, defenders. Finds my Marine Langlois. Playing the two-man game with Kamalsaw. Kamalsaw misses a real rebound. Great shot, sorry. Rebounded Kim Maroon again. Yeah, that was goes in on to Maroon. To Longmere. Longmere. Blocked by number eight, Catherine Short. Oh After a twisted turn of events, Erica McFadden comes up over half and is now controlling the offense. Ball goes into number eight, Catherine Short. And Williams with the steal. Takes it in herself and connects on the rail. And another timeout called by the Guelph Griffins. These turnovers are coming fast and furious for the Lancers since we've gotten our starters back on the court and opened up a 10-point lead. Mike, what are you seeing out there? I'm seeing a very fast-paced game. I'm seeing a game definitely could uh, be in favor for the Lancers a whole lot more than it already is. Some timely turnovers, you know, not getting on some, some lamps. Obviously, Jessica Clemenceau has been the brightest spot thus far has about 12 points on in this quarter alone yeah and she has played the entire game like it looks like uh Maya Marie Langlois since she's gotten on the court she's in a little bit of a shooting slump but as you said earlier shooters can most of the time shoot their way out of a slump and I look for her to do that the rest of the way definitely obviously you see uh Kim Maroon has been uh very intense getting on the glass uh, really contributing contributing in a positive way that's the great thing about this Lancers team, Lancers team that I like to reiterate all the time is that the big three are terrific but it's the role players it's those bench players the players that are only getting five six minutes a game what are you doing with your court time no that's true and true to have a Kim Maroon go out there who usually only plays eight minutes a night who's played the majority of this first half and plays stellar minutes and have no drop off is fantastic and really a testament to this Lancer team. Now McFadden given trouble by Langlois. Langlois picks up the ball. Finds Williams. LaRock with it now. LaRock back to Williams at the top of the key looking for something else. Finds Langlois. Windsor will hold for the last shot I believe. Langlois splits the team. Oh. That was sick. Absolutely sick. McFadden to Yalen. Throws him a prayer. And no the good. Score at the score at half. The Windsor Lancers 44. A women's basketball game between your Windsor Lancers and the Guelph Griffins. Be sure to stay tuned for the second half of our doubleheader. The men's team will play the Guelph Griffins in what is sure to be a great showdown.
The first half was a great half for one Jessica Clamal song from the Windsor Lancers. 19 first half points, 7 for 10 from the field, spec'd. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Well, I mean, she already eclipsed her season average of 18 points a game, so I can't wait to see what happens with her in the second half. So a few things of note for the Lancers areas that they can improve. They were 1 for 8 from beyond the arc in the first half, 12.5%, and that's something that they've been trying to work on all season. It's been the one area where you could say maybe it's a weakness for the Lancers, so 12.5% is not going to cut it for the Lancers when it comes to facing some of these better teams in the CIS. Also, 11 for 16, that's 68.8% from the free from the free throw line. Guelph has been giving them plenty of opportunities to shoot the charity stripe and they need to start knocking down more of them. I agree with you. I mean, the Windsor Lancers were 96% in uh, the other game they had this is a you know free throws are not what what hurt this team that's for sure uh, for me right now it has to be the rebounding uh, they're only out rebounding Guelph by uh, four but they are you know they are second in the league and rebounding Guelph is fourth uh, facing a tough rebounding team in the Guelph Griffins it has been a very tough matchup on the glass more than that way I believe, I said, uh, you know, during the broadcast that if you snooze on the glass, you're going to snooze in the point column. Well, right now, Windsor's kind of snoozing on the glass. That is why they've only scored 44. They've had plenty of opportunities to, you know, at, at least reach 60 by now. Obviously, uh, one of those opportunities being if you would have started Maya Marie Langways and Carissa Williams. Uh, Langways is our second highest scorer right now coming off the bench. She has six points on the night. Speck, what do you expect in the second half? I expect them not to snooze. That is 100%. They're playing Williams and Langlois now, and as soon as they got back in the game, the turnovers started coming back. They were getting more fast break opportunities. I expect to see more of that from the Lancers and try and extend this lead a little bit more. You know, they say you snooze, you lose, but this is the second best team rated in the country, and when they snooze, they just don't win by as much as they expect to. So I would expect a much better effort and no snoozing from these Lancers. On, the, on for the Lancers right now, now we have Jocelyn LaRock, we have Christine Lalonde, Kaitlyn Longmere, Tessa Krieger, and Jessica Clemonson. Again, not going with uh, Williams or Murray Langlois. Yeah, interesting that they're starting again with this lineup, but there shouldn't be much of a drop off. And, and McTavish hits a little floater to open the scoring here in the second half. Yeah, McTavish had six points in the first half, leading the way. The rock down low to Clemenson, to Longmere, to Lawan. Great ball move from the Lancers. Opens up a three for Longmere. And that was a far out shot. Maybe a step in and it would have been in. Yeah, the, another missed three by the Lancers. Comparatively speaking, the Griffins are shooting 50% from the three point line, which has kept them close in this game. Ball goes down low to number four, Barbara Ingrid Peters. To show to McTavish. McTavish hits. She has the first four points here in the second half. Yeah, that's 10 on the night for Catherine McTavish, number 23. Christine Lalonde now directing traffic. Finds Longmere to Clemenceau. Clemenceau to Tessa Krieger. Krieger. Finds Clemenceau to Longmere. Great ball movement again to LaRock. Air ball. She, she I believe that was tipped as well. That was number eight. Catherine Short got a hand on the uh, LaRock three-point attempt. LaRock looking for a call. Can't get it. Ball going Guelph's way. Here is number five, Marley Freeman. Freeman looking for McTavish. She finds her. McTavish, it's in. able to come up with it and well Griffins hurt the Lancers there. The lawn to Tessa Krieger. Playing the high low two man game to Clemenceau. Misses. Rebound Tessa Krieger. And McTavish is in there getting the rebound. She looks like she's doing all the work for this Guelph team. Spots up number 11 Caitlin Yalen. Can't find it. Rebounded by number four Barbara Ingrid Peters. And we have what looks to be a foul on number four Caitlin Longmere. Definitely not the start to this half that the Lancers wanted. 
um, bringing back and into the, the game Williams and Longboys. Cheyenne Roger also checks in with the second two of the big three. Yeah, going for a more physical look to match the aggressive style that the Griffins are playing right now. A drive to the lane by number eight, Catherine Short. And the Lancers only up by four here with 7.30 left to go in the third quarter. Jocelyn the Rock to Cheyenne Roger. Roger looks for Clemoso, finds her. Ball tipped by number eight, Catherine Short. And Clemoso has been contained in this first or, uh, first couple minutes. Third quarter of the first couple minutes. What are the Griffins doing to frustrate her down low, Mike? They're bringing back that, you know, that double team. They're bringing in, you know, they have the... Her man playing on her. Another girl that was playing on Cheyenne Roger is coming in, and they have a guard staying down. But it doesn't seem to hurt her there. Jessica Clemenceau. Yeah, really showing why she's a world-class athlete. She's going to be representing three team friends at the Summer Olympics in a couple of years. I did not know that. Thank you, Spect. That's actually terrific to know that you know a player from Windsor gets the gets that opportunity. Here comes Clemenceau. And she nails her 22nd point of the night. Jessica Clemenceau is, is dominant, that is for sure. And the Lancers begin to press again. Corps able to break the press. McTavish dishes over a drive. And a shot thrown up by number four. Barbara, Barbara Ingrid Peters is not good, but she was fouled on the play, so she will go to the line. That looked like good defense to me down low by Cheyenne Roger. Nothing really extracurricular there, but uh, I'm not a referee, so I can't really argue. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's tough. It's tough to not make a call like that, especially when you're, you know, obviously contact is present as Peters misses the first. So, you know, the refs have a tough job to do. They let some go. They don't. Uh... They're easy, they're easy scapegoats, that's for sure. And Peters hits the second. Lancers up by six now. Here comes Marie Langlois to Carissa Williams. Williams to Langlois to Clemenceau. Clemenceau shoots. No good. Rebound by McTavish. McTavish finds number eight, Catherine Short. Short drives to the lane. And we got a travel call. Looks like she dragged her pivot foot on the play. Yeah, a little bit, Mike. I am impressed with how these Griffins have eroded the lead from the Lancers. And uh, really not shown any sign of uh, slowing down. The Rock to Marie Langlois to Carissa Williams. Williams spots up. No good. Rebounded by... Number four, Barbara Ingrid Peters. Peters drives the lane and a push on number 15. Ah, six. Second personal foul for Williams, who's only played around 12 minutes of game action tonight. Not what you want to see when you're having her in there to try and extend this lead for the Lancers. That's now dwindled down to six points. Throwing up the one and the five really had me uh, had me guessing there, Spect. <laughs> Always keeping you on your toes there, Hugo. Yes. Ball goes to number five for the Guelph Griffins. That is Marley Freeman. Freeman drives the lane. Shaz goes off glass, can't get it to go, loose ball, and a fight for it, a jump, and it will be Guelph Griffin's possession. Windsor Lancer's possession. And Erica McFadden checks in now. McFadden's had a heck of a game so far, so we will see if the Lancers are able to contain her and her speed and shooting ability. Marie Langlois is looking. Finds Joss on the rock. How low ball gets to Clemenceau to La Rock. Great ball movement again. Langlois spins. Looking for Clemenceau. Three to shoot. Ball to Carissa Williams and she hits. Carissa Williams. 
terrific hustle play by Kim Maroon, knocking the ball out of bounds. But the Guelph Griffins will re maintain possession. Looking for someone here. She finds Kaylin Yalen to Erica McFadden. McFadden to number four. Back to Kaylin Yalen. Ball goes off Clemenceau's foot. It's a loose ball. Picked up by number eight, Marley Freeman, and she hits. Catherine Short, I mind you. Langlois to Williams. Williams drives to the lane. Throws up the flip shot. Can't get it to go. And we have a foul on the play on Carissa Williams. Do not want to be taking offensive fouls right now as this game gets closer. Right? Where can they improve right now as this lead dwindles away? Definitely kind of slowing down the pace, which isn't really what you hear when it comes to this women's Lancers team, but you have a lead, you have to maintain it. Yeah, they look sluggish tonight. The turnover numbers aren't there, and they're also turning the ball over a little bit more than they're accustomed to seeing. Lancers get the ball off a turnover, and Maya Marie Langlois hits. Do you think that the lead dwindling away has anything to do with the absence of the squeaky duck? We haven't heard the duck in over 10 minutes of play. It may be the ducks, Beck. It may be the ducks. Here comes William with it right now. Williams. Ball, terrific pressure defense, but Marie Langlois shoots, no good, rebound, Kim Maroon. Ball back out to Langlois, looking for Clemenceau, can't find her, taken away by number 14, Erica McFadden. It's the second turnover I've seen from Maya in her limited action, wonder if the rust from not starting this game is affecting her. McTavish, and a foul right now on Looks to be number nine, Cameroon. Lancers foul on number nine. I believe we'll be seeing Tessa Krieger checking into the game for the Lancers. Also, Caitlin Longmere is checking in for Carissa Williams. This is five fouls in the first six or seven minutes. Spect. This is not the Lancer basketball we're accustomed to seeing. I mean, we're, we're used to seeing them play aggressive, but we're not used to seeing them commit fouls as McTavish hits the first. Yeah, I wonder if this is a case of just simply playing down to the competition and the competition playing up to the level of the Lancers as well. McTavish hits a second, and the Lancers lead 52-45 to 45 with four minutes left to play here in the third quarter. Langlois to Krieger. Tessa Krieger to Langlois. Langlois to Longmere. Longmere spots up. Can't hit. Rebound. Kim Maroon. That was a fantastic rebound by Maroon there. Really playing a physical game tonight. Looking for Longmere. Finds her to Maroon. Langlois to Joss in the Rock to Longmere. Maroon shoots. No good rebounded Langlois. Lance is doing a great job of crashing the net. It's great when your guard play is getting rebound spec. Yeah, terrific. And that's one thing about Langlois as well that it goes um, underrated almost is that she averages over five rebounds a game as a guard. Langlois spots up, can't get it to fall. Here now is number five, Marley Freeman. Freeman. Down low to McTavish. McTavish back out to Aaron Tilly. Tilly to McTavish. Drives on Maroon. Ball stripped away by Joss on the Rock. Comes out. Here's Marie Langlois. Lances with numbers to Tessa Krieger. And she is fouled on the play by number... By number nine, Dana Van Balkum. You struggled a little bit, but you, you picked her up. That, that was awesome. Uh, I feel like my second half is not as good as my first. But it will progress. Well, buddy. I mean, you sound good. You look good. And that's really all it's about as a broadcaster is the hair and what you've got on it. It really doesn't matter what you say on the air. It's, it's about the hair. And you got all that going. I, I think you're wrong. But it's... 
Thank you for the encouragement. I've never taken a broadcasting class, but I mean, that's that's what I've gathered from watching uh, TSN. But what have you gathered from watching the game today, Spect? What I've been gathering is that the Lancers are not playing that fast-paced game that we're used to seeing from them. The Griffins have done a terrific job of just being able to slow it down, and the Lancers look frustrated. And if they do come out with a win from this game, as a team, you never want to be frustrated by a victory. You know, that can be the worst thing that can happen for you, because all of a sudden it plants a little seed of doubt in your mind. Maybe we're not that good, especially the team like the Korean 9 12 Griffins compete with us, even if they have a bunch of players. So I really want to see the Lancers be sure to who they are and be a good for the rest of this game, because they really haven't been so far. Coming out of this timeout, what is the Guelph Griffins coach telling them at this moment, in your opinion? We're right in there with them. We're down seven points. This is, you know, this is a close game. It, it doesn't matter who we're playing. Don't think about them as the number two seeded Windsor Lancers. This is oh, like, just like any other team, you know, and we can beat them. We're only down by seven. Krieger hit, misses the first. Krieger misses the second. Ball comes out, rebounded by number nine. That is Dana Van Balkum. Van Balkum. Finds McTavish to Marley Freeman. Freeman drives the lane, kicks it out. Number eight, Catherine Short comes up short. Well played on the word play again there, Hugo. My Marie Langlois finds Andrea Kiss. To My Marie Langlois, spots up. Can't hit. Ball tipped out of bounds by number seven, Andrea Kiss. Good to see a St. Anne's product. Homegrown, that's Windsor, Ontario. Yeah, the Windsor Lancers do an excellent job of recruiting locally. There are, I believe, five girls on this team who are from Windsor, Essex County. And great shout out there to St. Anne's who has done a great job of producing a ton of athletes from this region. Ball, three ball missed by Longmere, tipped back by Jessica Clemenceau. Langlois. Drops in the lane, kicks it to Longmere. Longmere to Andrea Kiss. Kiss to Clemenceau. Back to Longmere. Longmere shoots and can't hit. Caitlin Longmere is really struggling with the three ball today. The entire team is struggling, Mike. Um, I believe that's one for 12 on the night. Fourth Windsor Lancers from three. It just keeps getting worse and worse the more they try and shoot the three ball. I don't know how they can fix it. I guess you just have to try and shoot your way out of this slump. Well, when you're two for 14, I think you might have to abandon ship at this point, Spec. Yeah, and there's been a ton of open looks as well. It's not like these are contested shots that they're missing. Aaron Tilly throws one up. No good rebound. That is number 15, Samantha Rapatos. No good again. My Marie Langlois is fouled on the play. That is number five, Marley Freeman. Yeah, she almost dribbled through the entire Griffin's team there. That was a fantastic display of handles. Third team foul. Entering the game for the Lancers, number 13. Marie Langlois gets the inbound from Andrea Kiss. Ball gets to Kiss. Working down low with Cheyenne Roger to Clemenceau. The shot, and it's good. That is number 21, Anna Mullins. Finally hitting a three ball for the Lancers. Breathe in a sigh of relief. 3-4-15 on the night from three-point land. And we have an offensive foul away from the ball. Number 15, Vanessa Rampato. Rampato again being physical down low. Too bad it's she's getting called for every little thing. Sometimes the calls just don't go your way. Well, she, uh, she's been chippy tonight. It's not like she doesn't deserve some of these calls that are coming her way. She hasn't played a ton of minutes, but when she's been on the court, you're noticing her because she's trying to get her hands all over Clemenceau at this point. Boys number nine blocked by Anna Mullins. Langlois to kiss to Cheyenne Roger. Anna Mullins down low to Clemenceau and like clockwork. Clemenceau hits, will go to the line for the third. Spect a terrific game by Jessica Clemenceau. Right now she has 24 points. 
Yeah, she's really putting this team on her back at this point, having not started Langlois or Williams in this game. I mean, she's really just had an opportunity to shine for the Lancers. And she hits her free throw. Lancers are shooting 63% from the free throw line today. Marley Freeman brings up the ball now. Marley Freeman driving through defenders, blocked by Cheyenne Roger. Throw, throw that block in the shower because that was filthy. Just filthy. Huh? I like, like it. That? I like, like it. That? Trying out some new things. Oh, goes to number eight. That is Catherine Short. Cannot hit it. And with that, the third quarter ends. Spect, we've seen now that Marine Langlois and Carissa Williams, when they're not in the game, it is, it's just not a good sign for the Lancers. They have been the rock on this team so far. I mean, what do you think? Do you think, am I, am I overreacting? Am I, you know, am I true in what I say? What do you think? I don't believe you're overreacting. I mean, you can tell when uh, Maya Marie Langlois and uh, Chris Williams are not on the court. The Lancers just kind of lack that speed um, that we're used to seeing from them, especially they, they do not get any fast break opportunities when, when those girls aren't on the court. It's, it's a much more um, structured kind of game, not as free-flowing, and that's what really allows the Lancers to dominate other teams around the country. But when they are in the game, I mean, they, they continue to open up the lead to about 13 points when you put Maya Marie Langlois and Crystal Williams into the game and then as soon as you take them out and you leave Jessica Clemenson on the court by herself, uh, the Guelph Griffins start to come back in the game as well, Mike. Definitely. <laughs> the crowd is going nuts here at half or at, uh, the start of the fourth quarter. Some circus shots being attempted right now as uh, we wait for the fourth quarter. You're up 13 in this fourth quarter. It, definitely you can't take anything for granted. No, 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 you, you sure can't, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I kind of got caught up watching. The this this might be better than the this might be better than the rubber ducky. Yeah, it is 100%. I mean, that guy came pretty close on uh, one occasion to hitting one of those backwards half court shots. Heading into the fourth quarter, Mike, what are your keys to victory for the Lancers? My keys to victory would have to be don't rush, don't create turnovers, and obviously we see right now that Langlois and Williams are not in the game to start the fourth quarter, so you have to slow it down. Don't play a game you're not accustomed to playing. Work with Clemenson down low, work with Tessa Krieger, and you'll be fine. And if you're the Guelph Griffins, what are you thinking right now to try and get back in and win this game? Offensively, I'm thinking go at Tessa Krieger and Jessica Clemenson, but defensively, I'm, I'm thinking let them take the shots that they can't hit. Number eight, Catherine Short with it now. Throws it up, cannot hit. Loose ball, fight for it. We got a jump ball. It will be. Will be Windsor, Lan Windsor Lancers basketball. Number five, Christine Lalonde with the ball now. Gives it to Jocelyn LaRock. Waiting on the wing, finds Clemenson to Longmere. Longmere to Tessa Krieger. And we got a three in the key call on Tessa Krieger. That's one of those that's one of those fouls that just I don't I don't I don't get sometimes. Uh, the referees have their own interpretation in my opinion and you know sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, that's definitely one that you don't want to take as well. You never want to take a foul in the offense. The shot hit by Catherine Short. Because clearly the Guelph Griffins can make you pay if you take a three in the key penalty uh, foul with a three pointer of their own. Now shooting six for twelve from beyond the arc in this game. Well goes to Christine Lalonde. Lalonde at the top, kind of directing traffic at the moment. Clemenson with the screen. The pick and roll. Ball thrown up by Longmere. No good. Rebound goes to number seven, Aaron Tilly. Shots up, and it's good. Marlene Freeman hits the three ball. 
The Guelph Griffins have a pulse down by eight here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they're really living and dying by the free ball at this point. In the first quarter, you saw they were knocking down a ton of them. Kind of went away in the second quarter. It's back now, and they're down by eight points to the Windsor Lancers. Clemenceau just turned the ball over. Marley Freeman to Aaron Tilly. Tilly throws it right to Christine Lalonde. Here come the Lancers on a three-on-one. Ball to Clemenceau. Clemenceau shoots. And it's good. Off glass. The easy bunny for Jessica Clemenceau. See, the thing with playing against the Windsor Lancers, if you want to beat them, you have to play pretty near a perfect game. You cannot afford turnovers like that in the offensive zone because the Windsor Lancers will make you pay. And that's why it's a 10-point differential at this point, even though the Lancers haven't played their best game. Marley Freeman having trouble. Stripped away by Joss on the rock. Ball goes to Christine Lalonde. Lalonde to Joss on the rock to Tessa Krieger. Krieger to Longmere. Longmere gets a screen to the rock. Ball goes down low to Clemenceau. Who is triple team down low? Fights through it and is fouled. Will go to the line for two. Yeah, Clemenceau has been drawing a ton of fouls today. Already been to the line on, I believe it's four will now be the fifth trip to the line for Jessica Clemenceau. She's seven for eight on the night from free throws. Yeah, Jessica Clemenceau miss automatic from the free throw line. And that's the one thing you see from, you know, the four or five position in basketball is some of them just cannot hit the broad side of a barn when at the stripe. It's a good thing you're able to work in the free throws as she hits the first into your repertoire because they're not something that just, you know, they, they, hap they happen. You have to work on them. Well, yeah, the team as a whole is shooting 65% from the free throw line. As Kamal saw, hits the second. The second one, that makes her 9 for 10 on the night. She's shooting 90% by herself. Easy math. It's great. Yeah, sure. Erica McFadden to Van Balken. Both just checked in. Van Balken working on Cheyenne Rogers. Shoots. No good. Ball corralled by number 10, Maya Marie Langlois, who dribbles up the court. She stops, she pops, sh she can't drop. Now a battle for it. Picking up by McTavish, give it to McFadden. Erica McFadden driving through the lane, working. And we have what well, seems to be a charge call on Erica McFadden. Wow. Referee saying she was out of control as she went in to Maya Marie Langlois. Charging into the pile like she's Darren McFadden out there, Mike. Cross-reference? I like it. Maya Marie Langlois with it now. Carissa Williams down low to Clemenceau. Back to Williams. Cross-court to Anna Mullins. Mullins to Clemenceau. To Langlois. Back to Clemenceau. Great ball movement, and it turns into two points for the Lancers. Just methodical ball movement out there by the Lancers. Absolutely stress-free, even though this game was a little close for a while. Um, the confidence is back with Maya Marie Langlois, Carissa Williams, and Jessica Clemenceau on the floor. Ball driven to the lane and foul on number 13, Cheyenne Roger. If Cheyenne Roger would have just stayed put, hands in the air, I don't think I don't think there would have been a call in the play. But because she shifted in to number eight, Catherine Short. They had to make the call. It was the right call. The referees got one right. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, very good call by the referees there. And uh, yeah, can't say any more about it. Short hits the first. Number 23, Emily Prevo. Emily Prevo checks into the game. And Catherine Short hits the second. Yeah, Prevo's a first-year player for the Lancers. Does not get a lot of time on the court, but she's solid defensively and a great shooter. And we're going to see a lot more of her in the next four years to come for this Lancer team. Kicks out to Anna Mullins. Mullins can't hit. Rebound. Cheyenne Roger. No good. And picked up by Erica McFadden. Catherine Short, bugged by Langlois, shakes her off. Ball gets to number nine. That is Dana Van Balkum. Van Balkum gets the ball back from Short. Looking for something now. She heaves it up. No good. 
and a fight for it, and we have a a foul on the play, I presume. And Van Balken looks exhausted, had to stay down on the court there for a second and be helped up by a teammate. Clearly, pretty tough game for these starters for the Guelph Griffins. And you know what? The Guelph Griffins are not looking like a team that's seventh in the OUA West. They are playing this Lancers team hard. They're playing them well. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Is this a... Is this are the Guelph Griffins a team that shouldn't be underestimated, or are the Windsor Lancers just not playing Windsor Lancer basketball? The Griffins are a team that have had a poor shooting percentage all season, particularly from three-point range. Tonight, they're around the 50% mark from three-point range, and that's what's really allowed them to stay close in this game. If they could continue to do that against other OUA competition, they probably wouldn't be in seventh place, but I think this is a case of playing up to your competition, and their best players are hitting shots like they haven't been doing earlier in the season. And Prevo almost mauled by number four, Barbara Inring Peters. So Prevo goes to the line and misses the first. I like the imagery there, Mike, with the word mauled. That's a, did you buy a thesaurus for Christmas? Was that a, or a gift or something like that? Yes, I took it from our good friend Anchor Kumar. Oh, yes, yes. Well played. Uh, Kumar, if you're listening, uh, we love you, buddy. And keep reading that thesaurus. And Prevo hits the second. Lancers up by 13 here with five minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Let's hope they can hold on. Ball goes to Barbara Ingring Peters. Peters looking for, she was looking for McTavish, threw it out of bounds, and it will be Lancers possession. Anna Mullins to inbound. And out come the Lancers. The Griffins now developed in a 3-2 zone, really, really hoping the Lancers will shoot the basketball. Yeah, with, uh, four Way to break down the zone, and Prevo cannot get it to go. Rebound by Carissa Williams, and a jump ball going the Guelph Griffins' way. Emily Prevo was given a gift, but she didn't cash it in in time. With uh, four minutes and 30 seconds to go and up by 13 points, at what at what point do you think they take... Um, oh, I guess they're taking Chris Williams out of the game currently. At what point do you think they take Maya Marie Langlois out of the game? Um, I'd say in the, within the next uh, minute or two, give uh, Cameroon some more opportunity. Just, you know, get the bench more involved because once the CIS championships come around, you're going to need to have players who are ready, who aren't rusty. McFadden... She cannot hit the long three ball corralled by McTavish. And another jump ball, and it will be Lancers basketball. As I was saying, the bench really needs to come in. They really need to make a presence in this game, which they have. Uh, Anna Mullins has knocked down a three ball. Kim Maroon playing tremendous on the glass. Cheyenne Roger as well. Ball driven to the lane by Marie Langlois. Stripped out of bounds. Lancers maintain possession. And I agree with you completely with what you were saying about getting your bench players involved. As we saw last season with the men's basketball team as well, you never know when injuries are going to bite, having lost Josh Collins before the playoffs last season. So it's great for these women to be able to get the bench players involved in key situations in the basketball game in case they really are needed to step up and play a big role down the stretch. For and, the Lancers. and Prevo hits a layup. The Griffins go the other way. Here's Erica McFadden attacking Cheyenne Roger. No dice. And fighting for the ball now. Comes out. And we have a ball off of number four, Barbara Ingrid Peters. Looked like kind of a missed travel there by the referees on Eric McFadden. What are those follow the bouncing ball type scenarios? And we have a timeout from the Guelph Griffins. Remember to stay tuned after the fourth quarter for the men's game against the Guelph Griffins starting at 8 p.m. So after this game, grab a soda, grab some chips or popcorn, sit in front of the computer, and listen to GoLancers.tv. And remember, for all your recaps of the week's sporting events in Lancer Nation, you can always tune into 99.1 CGM FM for Lancer Sports. Hosted by Anchor Kumar, Mike Specht, and myself. Also, if you have the time, grab a couple of friends and come down here and watch the game live. Plenty of seats here um, to watch your Winter Lancers play. 
and it's going to be an exciting game to see the men play against the Gulf Griffins, finally returning home from a top road trip. Now the men come into the, come into the game 7-5. and five. The Griffins are still 3-9, and nine, much like the women's team. What are you expecting from the Windsor, from the Windsor men's coming out right now? I, I just expect a better game overall. A lot of the things that they've been working on this year have to do with limiting turnovers, playing solid defense, and not allowing teams to go on long scoring runs against them where you allow the teams to get back into the game. Windsor has a premier offense, especially with their big man, Leighton Phillip, down low. The, the entire team really goes through him, so they can put up points. It's just about limiting the opportunities for other teams at the other end to score points against them. As we saw against the Lakehead Thunderwolves a few weeks ago where Henry Tan went off for 26 against the Lancers. Superman Tan, that is for sure. Now Women's game is back on. Andrea Kiss to Jocelyn The Rock. Ball thrown away. Picked up by number 11. That is Caitlin Yalen. Number 5, Marley Freeman. Freeman having all kinds of problems with Marie Langlois. Stolen by Marie Langlois all alone, and she hits the layup. Lancers up by 17 with three minutes to play. I'm going to bring out the salami and cheese for this one, Spect. I think this game is over, but let's see what unfolds in these last three minutes. Yeah, and that just shows you right there why Maya Marie Langlois is probably the top point guard in the country at this point. Defensive player of the year. She can steal the ball and then hurt you on the other end as well. And Carissa Williams with the turnover now. Williams in all alone. She hits. You see the pressure put on by the Lancers and the Guelph Griffins are forced to take another timeout. What if I'm the Guelph coach right now, what am I telling my players? Um, I, I think you're just saying, you know, we've kind of let this one get away, uh, get away from us in the last little while. Obviously, you don't want to tell them that this is a more talented Windsor Lancers team, but clearly that's the case, and you want to try and build them up a little bit and say, hey, you've played a good game. You've hit your shots, but you know what? The Lancers are coming out on top right now, as everyone's pretty much expected, and great effort, and I don't know, see you on the weekend. Now, Coach Valet, what might she be telling her players at the moment? It's about time. You know, we expected this team to open up this kind of lead at some point in the game. And they're finally playing the way that Coach Valet expects them. It took them a while. It took them three and a half quarters to be able to get to this level that they should have been playing at for a full 60 minutes. We see right now that the Lancers are able to execute down low. Clemens saw having a big game, 25 plus points on the night. Uh, Cheyenne Roger coming in, doing some great work. Kim Maroon, some big time rebounds in the second quarter to you know keep the Lancers up, keep them have a control of the pace of the game. They controlled the glass. Ultimately, they controlled the game. My, the Michael Hugo theory of basketball, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you know my theory is just uh, the team that scores the most points is going to win the game. You know, anytime. So I think the Lancers are really doing that well out there tonight, uh, scoring more points than the Griffins. All right, thank you, Pepper Brooks. <laughs> Ball inbounded to Marley Freeman, and the Lancers continue to press right at the moment. Marley Freeman to number three, McTavish. 23, McTavish to number eight, Catherine Scott. The short, pardon me. Short, dribbling around defenders. Can't hit, rebounded by Clemenceau to Jocelyn LaRock. Finds a leaking, Carissa Williams makes a terrific move and finishes with the left hand. Fantastic crossover there to get the lay in. That was terrific basketball by Carissa Williams. Erica McFadden with the ball now. Two, number five, Marley Freeman. Freeman working on Marie Langlois. Having trouble again. Throws it into no man's land. Intended for Erica McFadden. What did you call that? An incomplete pass spec? Yeah, that, that looked like a Christian Ponder incomplete pass. kind of. Or a Josh Freeman. Yeah, I couldn't hit though. Well played. You know, I like the cross-referencing there, Mike. Um, yeah. just, I'm just working with what you give me. <laughs> definitely wasn't anywhere near the intended target. Carissa Williams now moving up the floor. Shakes off the defender, but can't connect on the short jumper. Rebounded by number eight, Catherine Short. Short dribbles it off the foot of Kim Maroon. It is out of bounds. It is Griffin's possession. A minute 42 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Seems like the Windsor Lancers are on their way to their 12th straight win. McTavish 
And we have a call. We have a a foul on number 11, Jessica Clemenson. Do you think that with this 12 straight win, it'll be enough for the powers that be to put the Lancers in the number one spot over top of the St. Mary's Huskies, Mike? I really hope so. As a shot has gone up and missed off backboard by Kaitlin Yalen. As you were saying, the Lancers really deserve that number one spot, in my opinion. They played tremendous defense. Jessica Clemenza is ruthless. Not the second time, but the third time. She gets her own rebound and connects. Yeah, that was a fantastic putback by Clemenza. Clemenza is fantastic. Ball heaved up and no good. Rebounded by Carissa Williams. Williams looking, finds Murray Langlois for the easy two. I really believe that the Griffins are just tired at the moment. Yeah, and, and we have a charge right now. A credit to that team as well. I mean, they played their hearts out tonight, and they kept it close for three quarters against this very talented Windsor Lancers squad. Definitely not looking like a 3-9 and nine basketball team tonight. Kim Maroon takes the charge on the play. And you're right, the Guelph Griffins have stayed in the game for the most part, but it seems right now that... You know, the stamina and the endurance of the Winter Lancers is truly paying off. They just don't stop. I guarantee you play another fourth quarter, it's another four quarters, it's going to be the same pace all over. Oh, 100%, Mike, and especially because it looks like the Lancers have tightened up their defense, especially around the perimeter, because the Griffins have not been able to hit that three-point shot that's been working for them all game, and that's really where the lead's extended for the Lancers after the three ball went away for the Griffins. Foul on number five, Marley Freeman. That will send Christine Lalonde to the line. Hits the first. And the Lancers up by 26 with less than a minute to go. 27. Ball taken up by the Griffins. Caitlin Yalen. Back to the top by number five, Marley Freeman. Freeman looking around. Kaylin Yalen, she pops. No good, rebounded. Who else? Kim Maroon. Kim Maroon, excellent game from her tonight. She's been all over the place, um, usually coming off the bench as a reserve. Started tonight and uh, has done a fantastic job. I am really impressed of what I've seen in the second half by this Windsor Lancer team. Definitely a shaky first quarter. Let the Griffins stay in. Second quarter, same difference. But here in the in the second half, as Kim Maroon hits the first, they've really shown why they are a top five team, if not the best team in the CIS. And I cannot wait to see them play some teams outside the OUA just to see how they rank up with the St. Mary's and the Reginas and the Albertas of the of of the of the world. Yeah, for sure, Mike. And this is what you would call a coachable victory as well. There is still clearly a lot of things that the Lancers would like to do better. They probably would have loved to have scored 100 points in this game and only allowed 30. So a lot of stuff for the Lancers to work on after this game, and we will talk about it in the post game in just a moment. The ball bounces off the referee. And then off Emily Prevo, it will be Guelph Griffin basketball. Five seconds to go, and thank you for watching the women's coverage on GoLancers.tv. Stick around for the men's game at 8 p.m.